Welcome to EPG Parshala project. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Bindu B, working as assistant professor in Marthiofles Training College, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. Today, we are going to discuss about the economic perspectives of education. Let me start the module on neoliberal perspectives on education. The objectives of this module are to explain and define the concept of neoliberalism, to explain the characteristics of neoliberalism, to analyze the impact of neoliberalism on education, to understand the various programs initiated by the government in accordance with the changes in neoliberalism. Well, students, you know education is a dynamic process. The concept of education underwent many changes during the past centuries. Education has its strong base on the prevailing economic conditions of the time. Any changes in the economic system will have its impact upon the education also. Last century witnessed dramatic changes in the world economies and it is reflected in the education scenario also. Today, I am briefing about such a change that occurred during the close of 20th century and it was the concept of neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is a term that is used to encompass a variety of economic, social and political ideas, policies and practices functioning on both individual and institutional levels. Do you have any idea about the concept of neoliberalism? We are familiar with the term neo which means new and liberalism that is some relaxation to some extent. Neoliberalism is an ideology based on individual economic rationality and the idea that a weak state is better than a strong state and what is private is necessarily good and what is public is necessarily bad. This ideology calls for a dismantling of the Keynesian welfare state and the withdrawal of the state from the economy. The policies and practices of neoliberalism operated local, state, national and global levels, making their identification and elucidation extremely difficult. While neoliberalism refers to a varied collection of ideas, practices, policies and discursive representations, this collection is united by three broad beliefs. The benevolence of the free market, minimal state intervention and regulation of the economy and finally the individual as a rational economic actor. Let us have a look into the history of neoliberalism. In the United States, it was originated where liberalism is a political orientation. The term neoliberalism is often confusing. Its root, liberalism comes from the classical liberal economic theory of Adam Smith, David Ricardo and the Manchester School that is based around free markets and minimal state intervention in the economy. The neo or new aspect of this liberalism comes from the ways in which neoliberalism alters the liberal economic theory to correspond to new material conditions. This was created in the mid 1970s as a response to economic stagflation in which a steep recession is combined with a rise in prices. Neoliberalism is a return to an extension of the laissez faire economic theory that reigned until the 1930s but adapted to a new economic and social world. The most powerful of these extensions is the expansion of economic rationality past the economic sphere and into the social sphere. Let us look in detail the features of neoliberalism. First, the self-interested individual. The philosophy view individuals as economically self-interested subjects. In this perspective, the individual was represented as a rational optimizer and the best judge of his or her own interest and needs. Then second, there is the free market economies. According to neoliberalists, the best way to allocate resources and opportunities is through the market. The market is both a more efficient mechanism and a morally superior mechanism. Next is the philosophy is based on commitment to laissez sphere because the free market is a self-regulating order. It regulates itself better than the government 
or any other outside force. In this, neoliberalists shows a distinct district of governmental power and seek to limit state power within a negative conception, limiting its role to the protection of individual rights. Next is the commitment to free trade involving the abolition of tariff or subsidies or any form of state imposed protection or support as well as the maintenance of floating, exchange rates and open economies. The complex assemblage of various ideas, policies and practices that like any supermercy are in a constant state of change confounds attempts to define a consistent set of fundamental aspects of neoliberalism. Just have a look into the main characteristics of neo liberalism policies that is policy of deregulation of markets that means freeing capital mobility. Then again there is the privatization. Then liberalization which means including weakening trade protection and tariff reductions. Then there is the case for open markets. Then there is free trade, reduction of the public sector, then decrease state intervention in the economy. Now, you may be interested in knowing how this concept came into being. The modern development of globalization and neoliberalism are closely intertwined. Neoliberalism developed as an alliance of theories and interest group centered around cultural conservatism and economic liberalism under the governments of Margaret Thatcher in England, Ronald Reagan in the United States and Brian Mulroney in Canada. The goals of the neoliberal ideology are to reduce physical pressure on public enterprises by privatization and to deregulate practices of the state. Even though the concept of neoliberalism has its economic association, it is closely related to education just like any economic change. Just we shall see what is the impact of neoliberalism and educational activities. Neoliberalism manifests in three major trends in higher education that is privatization, commercialization and corporatization. Neoliberal economic policies in higher education are characterized by the growth of capitalist and corporate influence. In the neoliberal model, higher education is ideally integrated into the system of production and accumulation in which knowledge is reduced to its economic functions and contribute to the realization of individual economic utilities. Previously, traditional universities focused on civic engagement, democratic education and earnings for its own sake. But the impact of neoliberalism on higher education put together the neoliberal university which focus on meeting the needs of the market, technical education and job training and revenue generation. To some extent, this contrast is accurate as the intense focus on revenue generation and the embracing of an economic rationality has led to dramatic changes in institutional priorities and occasionalization of the curriculum was given much importance. Now we can see the main aspect of neoliberalism on education, corporatization. This is a term that is often heard in the business world. What has it to do with the education? If so, what will be its impact? Let us see what it is. Higher education today is characterized by its international dimension with regard to exchange of knowledge, interactive networking and mobility of teachers and students and international research projects. While taking into account the national cultural values and circumstances, transnational flow of information and technology is now possible through the channels of globalized economy. This has made its great impact upon the existing system of education and driven towards corporatization of educational sector. This aspect reflects the effect on culture and brings about a new form of cultural imperialism. The rise of new cultural imperialism is shaping children, the future citizens of the world into global citizens, intelligent people with a broad range of skills and knowledge to apply to a competitive information based society. While discussing about corporatization, 
will again lead to us to another major element that is commercialization of education. What does it mean? The crucial trend that is seen today in the higher education scenario is that the degree of commercialization of institution is crossing its limit as profit motive being the chief concern and values, noble ideals which symbolize the higher education once have become faded concepts now. The change in the concept of higher education from public good to that of private good is more clear now because the government is facing difficulties in funding higher education institutions and it is instructing the institutions to generate fund themselves. How can the universities make it possible? One way out possibility for such institutions is the introduction of self-financing courses and hiking fee rates. The neoliberal individual is also different, that is homo economics. Do you remember the term economics from which the word economics originated? What does it mean? Yes, the art of prudent household management. Now dear students, think on economic lines and you may get the meaning of the term. The most distinctively neoliberal phenomenon is the redefinition of the individual as homo economicus, a rational economic actor whose behavior that is both economic and non-economic are determined by a cost benefit analysis. The economic rationality that neoliberalism expands to the social sphere extends to individuals who should rationally and consciously calculate the cost and benefit of all their choices, actions and beliefs. It is said that if all social life is to be understood economically, then the social domain like the economic one is governed by the rational choices of entrepreneurial individuals who see everything they do in terms of maximizing their human capital. Through minimal state intervention in their lives, individuals are free to pursue their interest. Though they must bear the cost and responsibility to do so. Since individuals are autonomous, they no longer need to rely on a larger society or to work together to attend to their common issues, problems and needs, nor do they belong to any particular class. In a neoliberal world, there are no social problems, only individual challenges and there cannot be a social solution to an individual challenge without restricting the individual's freedom. Another impact of neoliberalism in education is that it considers students as customers. You may be well knowing the term customers. Many a times ourselves were in a position of being customers. Is it possible to buy education like any other good in the market? Let us see what it is. One of the most documented changes to students within colleges and universities in the neoliberal world is their transformation from students to customers. While students have always let me use the term purchased their education to some extent, this economic exchange was secondary to their identity on campus as learners. An identity that is far different from that of traditional consumers. With a neoliberal com commodification of education, the economic exchange between the student and the institution becomes the defining relationship between the two. Scholars, policy makers and educational practitioners affirm this transformation through the way in which they conceive of the relationship between the institution and the student as one between the service provider and the customer. It may be true that colleges and universities have always treated their students as customers explicitly and directly calling them customers instead of students is a recent phenomena. Next, another peculiarity is that liberalism calls for a shifting focus of educational planning. The new trends and its constant demand on the workforce require different educational planning that enhance the quality of human resources of the country, which will go in tune with economic planning. It is recognized that we are living in a knowledge society which means that production activities in the 21st century will become increasingly knowledge based with science and technology contributing significantly to a country's economic growth. Another important aspect is that more reliance on information and communication technology. Nowadays, 
it is possible to think of a impossible to think of a day without using any kind of technological devices. We are more tuned to digital services. This has reflected in the education sector also. Education is experiencing relentless changes due to rapid developments in technology and communications with its impact on shifting the learning system across the world. This has resulted in a, a change in the ideas, values and knowledge for all of students and even teachers and created a shift in society from industrialization towards an information based society. The introduction of technology into the classroom is changing the environment of delivering education to students. That is the environment of delivering education to students is gradually giving way to a new form of digital literacy. More programs and education materials are made available in electronic form. Teachers are preparing materials in electronic form. Even this module presentation is an example. And students are generating papers, assignments and projects in electronic form. Blackboards are now interchanged by video projection screens. Books with storage devices, servers and CD-ROMs, new forms of assessment with the provision for examination through electronic means and notebooks are starting to give way to laptops. The use of computer managed learning system and tutorial exercises are done on a computer rather than in a classroom. Such developments in education portray that there has been a shift from industrialization to information based society. Next is that there is the introduction of autonomy. Within higher education, neoliberalism has introduced a new mode of regulation, a form of governmentality which calls for autonomy. We often hear about autonomous colleges. What does it mean by autonomy? Autonomy means self-norm and the condition or quality of being autonomous or independent. These type of institution can regulate their own affairs. Owing to greater flexibility, quick changes can be effected in the teaching learning process and incorporate latest changes taking place in the academic world. In the field of higher education, autonomy if exercised with responsibility and accountability will surely lead to distinctive academics, excellent monetary management system and unique administrative mechanism. In today's environment, Autonomy has become the order of the day in the higher education field as it provides individuals with a better chance of selection and at the same time reduce the financial burden of the state. Next is open market. The new concept offers opportunities for India to export education and earn foreign exchange. On the other side, this bids an opening for the entry of foreign universities into the country. Even though this may create severe competition to the inland universities since foreign universities are better endowed with infrastructure, financial resources, staff reputation, etc. The situation may generate a challenge and at the same time provide opportunity for the students to avail better facilities within the country. Another state that is felt commonly nowadays is that there happens to be a widespread inequality which is becoming more pronounced between students belonging to different economic strata. The widening gulf of inequality is due to the fact that only wealthy students could opt for the foreign education. As it promises jobs for the higher earnings, it may make the situation worse. Then we will pass on to the next feature that is cut off in public funding. Take the case of our country, here education is provided by the government. In most of the cases. Do you ever think why the government is spending more money for education? Yes, public welfare is possible and we have seen so far the miraculous power of education in changing the condition of the people. But neoliberal ideas are making some change in this regard. The neoliberal economic agenda is leading to decreasing fund for public services around the world. In education, this agenda attempts to weaken public control over education while simultaneously encouraging privatization of the educational service and greater reliance on market forces. Globally, decreased public funding of higher education 
is affecting institutions and systems. Neoliberalism assumes that the market is more efficient than the state. So goods and services once considered public should become privatized, which also frees up capital for the market. It seems that the policy of privatizing public science and its institution has proceeded ideologically rather than by rational calculation. Such policies are assumed to fuel innovation and maximize wealth creation. But that is a highly contested assumption. Higher education institution must adjust and are looking across borders for examples of adaptive and entrepreneurial organizations. If the government does not spend, how could the institution function in a smooth manner? How money could be procured? The neoliberalism advocates that institutions should generate revenue. To make up for the decrease in funds that resulted from the drastic decrease in funding of social services under the neoliberal regime, colleges and universities have prioritized revenue generation and have become increasingly reliant on private sources of funding. Harmonious with the focus of revenue generation was the growing importance of economic efficiency. What measures will they adopt for generating more revenue? Yes, more part-time and add-on faculty will be used. The focus on efficiency has extended to institutional decision making with systems of shared governance being overshadowed by more hierarchical models. Faculty priorities mirror those of their institution and in the name of revenue generation, they focused on applied and commercialized research. While the tenure system was simultaneously attacked as economically irrational. Students have undergone a parallel shift now increasingly focused on the extrinsic outcome of higher education as they reduce their concern for intrinsic rewards of the college experience. In general, a college education has increasingly been viewed as a private good to be purchased by a student who was redefined as a customer. And now we will move on to the changing phase of universities. Universities today based on neoliberal ideology are tuned into institutions producing a labor force with specific professional skills and equipped with the necessary flexibility skills to be able to adapt to the changing needs of the business world. The concern of this new workforce are economical rather than social. The connection between universities and societies is being replaced by the connection between universities and businesses. University graduates are trained to view the world as a competitive marketplace and focus on profit rather than the good of the society. Individuality is replacing collectivity and competition is taking the place of creativity and critical thinking. The ideas of critical thinking and interdisciplinarity that were the arguments peaking in the late 20th century is replaced by one area focus skill based training. Information communication technologies which are said to be the connecting the world are actually separating and disconnecting people from each other and from their environment. Next, we will pass on to the managerialism. With the introduction of neoliberalism, principles of managerialism is incorporated in the education sector. What is managerialism? Managerialism is the use of management principles for improving the quality of education whereby the process of planning, organizing, directing and controlling is achieved through greater freedom and with the help of new instrumentalities and strategies. Managerialism stands for giving full freedom to educational institution for system running using accepted management principles and making them fully accountable for their performance. In accordance with the changes taking place in the world, institutions have to reorient their curricula, instructional and evaluation strategies, certification modalities, admission procedures, academic planning strategies in order to meet the challenges posed by liberalization. Demand for transparency, efficiency and accountability are moving down from governments to institutions and further flittering to faculty, staff and students. Educational institutions 
need to become more and more accountable to the society and to its very element internal and external. What do you mean by accountability? Accountability is defined as being the responsibility on the shoulder and judicious about the authority on the hand. Accountability means to account for the actions and inactions, achievements and downfalls. The accountability structure of network is both bilateral and multilateral. Every stakeholder is accountable to other stakeholder for authority wielded over them, resources consumed and promises and expectations made. Such a trend is seen nowadays that the institution heads are accountable to the society to provide quality education, good quality of work life to the teachers and good learning environment to the society. The teachers are accountable to provide value oriented education to the wards and higher commitment to the extension activities and research. The students are accountable to the institution in upholding their traditions, fame and name carrying out academic responsibilities to the prospective employers by acquiring skills of being employed. Government stands accountable to all by providing necessary policy environment for orderly development of educational system by providing funds for the institution. Next come the concept of privatization. The new concept had provided opportunity for the easy entry of private providers in the field of education who are guided by profit motive concern. Neoliberalism assumes that the market is more efficient than the state. So goods and services once considered public should become privatized, which also frees up capital for the market. There is rapid expansion in private self-financing institutions, especially in the field of professional education. Self-financing courses in government and government-aided institutions. Commercial private higher education emerges from market forces and tied to economic and global forces. Next, we have the changing role of faculty. That is, the role of faculty and their institutional priorities were altered with heavy emphasis placed on generating revenue and a lesser role in institutional decision making. The tenure system which neoliberalists argued is economically irrational and a bad investment came under attack. Economic efficiency became a high priority for colleges and universities, which provided the rationale to use an unprecedented amount of part-time and add-on faculty. As nations tried to maximize their development of human capital through educating a larger number of students at a lower cost, one way to cut cost is by limiting the number of full-time faculty, hiring more conditioned faculty and increasing class size, particularly in low-cost field of study. Faculty in research institutions are encouraged to pursue externally funded research. Another impact of neoliberalism is the concentration of research fund in science, technology and medical field. Lastly, the financial structure of higher education in a neoliberal world, that is its tuition fees and system of financial aid further reflects and promulgates the redefinition of students as consumers. In Western world, this transformation began occur as early as 1972, with a distinctive change in government funding of higher education from institution-based to student-based aid. As this trend continued, it was coupled with a drastic change in aid to loan aid. Such changes help create a situation in which students are expected to bear the financial burden of their education and become increasingly viewed as the primary beneficiaries and purchasers of education. The social benefit of education, which have been used as a rational for continued financial support of higher education, are of little interest to the neoliberal regime, who views education just as any other social program, that is one in which the individual receives the benefit and as such should bear the responsibility. So to conclude, we have discussed so far the meaning and origin of neoliberalism and its impact on education sector. Hope you understood the concept, isn't it? Thank you.